Hi everyone, I'm proud to present the archive query log, a new query log of search engine result pages mined from the Internet Archive together with my colleagues from the Universities of Jena, Leipzig and Weimar. The idea behind the archive query log is simple. Search engine result pages and their URL contain all data needed to create a query log. And SERPs have accumulated on the Internet Archive for over two decades. So we just find all the archived SERPs from over 500 websites with the search functionality. Then we download and pass the SERPs and finally bundle everything in the AQL 2020 corpus. Following this simple setup, we have now mined the first large log of search engine result pages with over 300 million queries and over 1 billion search results. But let's take a step back and look at what query logs are and what they are good for. First of all, there is no one-fits-all definition of query logs, but they often consist of the same types of data. Queries submitted by users, ranked results that are displayed on search engine result pages, and further user data describing the context, session or clicks. Query logs have been a valuable resource for IR research, for instance, to improve query suggestions and reformulations, to analyze the user behavior and user experience, or to get feedback on retrieval models and to directly improve the rankings. But in the past, all the larger query logs were only accessible to the commercial companies that created them as shown in this excerpt from our comprehensive literature review. And there are obvious reasons to keep the query logs private. Not only can they contain highly sensitive user data, such as location or health state, but the logs are also of high commercial value because they include user behavior and could expose details about the underlying ranking models. The archive query log is nearly as large as the largest commercial logs and on par with respect to size and diversity. Public query logs, on the other hand, are at least an order of magnitude smaller, often contain only queries from a single language or focus on a single task like web search, or they are crawled for only a few months. The archive query log is the first publicly accessible query log to overcome these limitations, and it's over two times larger than all previous public logs combined. Let me now show you an overview how to mine the AQL from the Internet Archive. First, we need to list all popular search providers. Then we collect a list of all archived snapshots of SERPs from these websites and pass the queries from the URL. Finally, we download and pass the SERP's HTML contents to get the result snippets. To create the list of search providers, we use two resources. First, we looked at the Wikipedia list of search engines, which contains 163 popular search engines like Google or Baidu. But many other websites offer a search bar, for instance YouTube, Facebook or Amazon. In order to include these search providers in our log, we look at the most popular websites according to the Alexa Top 1 Million ranking, which estimates a website's popularity. We combine all archived rankings that are published until the service's closure in 2022, merge them using reciprocal WAN fusion and semi-automatically filter for the 951 websites with a search bar on the front page. After combining the Wikipedia list and our popularity-based list, we merge duplicate domains of the same search provider and remove sites that offer only autocomplete search, which links directly to a, page, to a single page. These filtering steps leave about 800 search providers to crawl from. The next step is to find other domains of each search provider 
and to manually test where the search bar redirects. By finding common URL prefixes, we can then fetch a list of all archived snapshots from the Internet Archive using their CDX API. Many search providers encode the query in the URL, either as part of the query parameter, like in this Google URL, or in a path segment or any other URL part. We manually find parser parameters for the search providers and we also pass the page number or page offset. After parsing the query, we download the SERP contents from the Wayback machine and pass the snippets. We have already built parsers for the most popular search providers according to the fused Alexa ring. To create new parsers, we sample SERPs and annotate the expected parsed result. If the SERPs cannot be parsed correctly with our existing parsers, we either adapt or extend them. Using approval tests, we can then guarantee the correctness of our parsers. Now let's take a look at the data. This graph shows how many queries, SERPs and search results the AQL contains at a given time. Overall, it contains queries and SERPs from the last 25 years. But there is a drop in the archived SERPs from 2004 to 2010. We don't know the reasons for this drop yet, but it might indicate that more specialized SERP parsers are needed. For the queries, we find 104 different languages, nearly all languages that can be identified with the Google Compact Language Detector that we used. Most queries are Chinese or English and between 5 and 20 characters long. But we also find longer queries that often contain copy-pasted stack traces or citations. Because queries can be archived at different times with different page offsets or from different users, most of the queries in the archive query log are duplicates. And the deduplication reduces the log size by 82% from 357 million to 65 million queries. For the SERPs, the most frequent languages are English and Russian. Interestingly, Chinese is not as frequent in SERPs as it is in queries, representing a potential bias in the dataset. We also looked at the domains that frequently appear on top ranks and found that Wikipedia is by far the most frequent top results besides self-references to the search provider's own domain that are often used to track clicks. Given the scale and diversity of the archive query log, it is a great resource for many use cases. Because it contains the rankings of many large search engines, it can enable transparent insights into the industry. We also found that many of the queries from recent track tracks appear in the AQL as well which opens opportunities for post-hoc evaluations of commercial search engines, as well as to expand benchmarks with real user queries from the archive pre-log. Diachronic analysis benefit from the large time coverage of our query log. For example, we can follow the rise of COVID-related queries during the pandemic. Last but not least, the archive query log can serve as training data for neural ranking models. I'd now like to highlight some limitations of the AQL. Currently, most of the parsers are written manually and our SERP parsers only consider the HTML, not dynamic content like JavaScript. We plan to explore automatic parsing approaches such as BERT-based classification models and wrapper generation for parsing SERPs. To parse dynamic content, one option could be to render the SERPs in a headless browser. The most pressing issue, however, is that most of the SERPs still need to be downloaded due to rate limits and network bandwidth. Here we plan to develop a more distributed download architecture. The AQL enables researchers and policymakers to investigate important questions about the search industry, for example regarding the accountability and fairness of major search engines and the discrepancy between academic IR and the search industry. 
However, the scale of the archive query log also opens up ethical and legal questions regarding personal data or illegal content. We therefore use our TIRA platform to give other researchers sandbox access to the log. On TIRA, you submit an experiment as a Docker container that is executed in a sandbox without internet access. The, ex the experiment results are then blinded until they are reviewed to prevent sensitive data from being leaked. To recap, the archive query log is the largest and most diverse query log ever made publicly available. With over 300 million queries, 130 million search engine result pages and over 1 billion search results, it is on par with large but private commercial logs. Because it's mined from over 500 search engines across two decades, it can be used for all sorts of query log analyses and enables to tackle new challenges in IR research. The crawling code is available on GitHub and the dataset on the TIRA platform. We are happy for any contributions to the codebase. Thanks for listening and please contact us if you have any questions.